Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. In our recent Dungeons & Dragons session, our cleric started to use a spell called Spiritual Weapon, where he creates a magical hammer to follow him around and bop things on the head. And we were using a dice to mark his position on the map, but that wasn't good enough for me. So today, I'm going to make a Spiritual Weapon weapon miniature, um, make, making it from almost from scratch really. We're going to start by taking this hammer from a sprue of Stormcast Eternals. This sprue was actually from the front of the Mortal Realms magazine, which I've reviewed in a recent video. Um, and because it's from Mortal Realms, um, this was actually a very cheap frame of miniature. So I don't mind just hacking off this hammer um, and to use for something different. So I'm clipping it off um, using using my uh, my clippers, getting as close to the miniature as possible to uh, get close cuts, and then you will see there's some little nubs and things that will clean off. I will clean those off with a craft knife and a mold line remover, and then that is our hammer. And the other things I'm going to need, I'm going to need a 25 millimeter base, and I'm going to need some green stuff, which is actually this yellow and blue stuff, it goes green when you mix it. So I'm going to cut a small amount of green stuff. I tend to find however much um, I cut off to use, I always cut off way too much. And then I'm going to just mix it. I think really you should use gloves when you're mixing this stuff, but um, I'm an edgelord and I don't. But there it is, all mixed up. I tend to find that when I'm wearing gloves, um, I find it difficult to manipulate the green stuff and uh, I have trouble with it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, roll it out. I'm just going to keep rolling it until it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Because I need very, 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 very thin strands of the green stuff. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to create a miniature that looks like strands of magic energy coming up out of the ground and twirling together and forming into a hammer. So I'm going to make this green stuff as long as thin as possible. And then I will actually plait, um, I will cut strands of it and I'll plait it together to make what I will hope will look like strands of energy. You see, I'm just getting it thinner and thinner and thinner. Just keeping going back um, and making it as, as thin as possible. And then I'm going to cut uh, relatively short lengths. Um, cut however much you want, really, but um, you kind of want roughly the same length of each strand that you cut. So um, you can see I'm basically eyeballing it by cutting one strand and then lining the green stuff up against it and cutting similar lengths. And then, like I say, I'm going to start plaiting these together to make um, rough shapes of how I want these strands of energy to look. And it's a little bit fiddly and it keeps sticking to my fingers a little bit. But I will persevere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, plait them slightly differently so some will have um, quite a tight weave and then some of them will have gaps and some of them will um, be very loose and at the moment I'm just making the rough shapes because obviously the uh, the green stuff is still very pliable at this stage so I'm making the rough shapes and then as it starts to dry out I will uh, shape it a little bit more to exactly how I want it to be. But for this one, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the weave and then I'm going to squash the two ends um, towards the center. And what that will do is it will make, it will make the strands push wider apart. So there's a lot more gaps between the weave, if that makes any kind of sense. Hopefully the images before you will explain that better than I can in words. But see, you're getting a, a sort of a, a rough, um, random twirl pattern there. Now i just leave that to dry as well. And some of the weaves I'm using uh, two strands, 
and I will also do some of the three strands. And I'm just using up all the green stuff that I've got. Um, not sure at this point whether I'm going to use every single bit that I'm weaving and making. I will get to that in a moment. See this one I'm twisting very tight and close together. And then this one I'm going to use three strands. And there's no real reason or rhyme to it. It's all a little bit randomized. I'm going to worry exactly how I'm going to use these strands and what they're going to look like in a moment. For now, it's just getting it into those rough shapes before the uh, green stuff starts to dry out. And it can be a little bit fiddly, but... I'm making it look more difficult than it really is. So I'm just making a rough sort of S shape with this last piece. Because this is going to be the main section. This is going to be the part that's actually forming into the hammer. And here is the hammer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the end of the green stuff around the hammer to attach it. So I'm just wrapping it round and round and round. Being careful not to break the green stuff or squash it together and lose the shapes of the, of the weave that I've just made. And then lying it out and forming that rough sort of S shape, which I want for the actual final thing. So there we go. Now, while everything is setting um, and this is starting to uh, firm up a little bit, I'm going to start by putting one of these weaves just around the bottom of the base. This is going to form a little bit of interest around the uh, the edging of the base and also it's going to provide some support for um, like a foundation for the miniature for the other strands to come out of and when that's attached you can see now that this central section is dry and I'm going to glue that on and we're going to glue it so that it looks like the front section of it is coming out from the same point on the ground where the part that I've already put on the base is coming out from and also so that the curve sits over the back of the part that I've already put on to uh, strengthen the, the whole piece. And what I'm going to do with each strand is each part that I add to the miniature I'm adding structural reinforcement to make sure it doesn't all just collapse under itself. So this part is the um, the rough weave that I did. I've trimmed it down to size. I'm just going to glue it in there. And then I've got another curvy section, which I'm going to glue on this side, attaching the back of the curve to the base. And like I said, each piece that gets added in, I'm positioning it in such a way so that it attaches to the base of the miniature and then also attaches to a different point on the miniature so that from every angle of the miniature, it's creating like a structural reinforcement to the whole thing. And there we go. So we have all of our magical strands and now I'm going to paint it. So I'm starting with a base coat of necrotic flesh from Army Painter and then I'm going to douse the whole thing in Games Workshop's Hex Wraith Flame. Not being too fussy about this at all, it's a very quick paint job. And when it's dry we get that, and then I'm going to use Necrotic Flesh again, Army Painter and Necrotic Flesh, to do a dry brush where you put um, paint on your brush and then wipe almost all of that paint back off, and then very lightly flick the brush over the raised details of the miniature to give a fine dusting of paint that hits all the highlights of the miniature. And then I'm going to add some skeleton bone to my necrotic flesh to do a final highlight on the most raised surfaces. So the very top of the hammer, the very tops of the curves. 
And that is it. The final thing I'm going to do is put some Chaos Black around the rim of the base, because I always do that on my miniatures. And that is the finished thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure how successful I've been, but that's certainly better than using a dice. Hopefully you've found this interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and I hopefully will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.